at the pricing just to make it clear from what I understand. And it does seem that occasionally they change these things. But currently, if you're working in a one-to-one -one situation, then you are not limited. You can actually uh, just practice for as long as you like. And I've been practicing with this for hours and hours uh, in the free version to, to really understand how it works. If you're working with bigger groups of between three and eight students, you are limited to only 45 minutes. But the free plan can be a good way to start because you can practice and make sure that you know how to work with Zoom. So, that, so I've got an account, so I'm just going to jump over to my account so we can actually start now to create straight away our first actual Zoom. And to do that, all I need to do, I'm going to click on my account, is click on schedule a meeting. That's the easiest way to do it. Schedule a meeting and we're going to create a meeting and get someone in the class quickly. So I'm just going to write in a quick uh, meeting with Keith. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to meet up with a friend of mine in a minute and go through a lesson with him so that we've got both the teacher view and the student view. I don't need to put anything else. The only thing I need to do is choose the date, choose the time, and you can do that from here. Decide how long it's going to be. So for example, whether you're going to do it for one or two hours. Uh, make sure that you've got the right time zone for you and a couple of little tips now to really help you with this. If you come down here, my tip to you is set it so host, that's the person that's actually setting up the uh, Zoom, is on video, but that the participants aren't. If you've got 10, 15, 20 students in the class and they've all got their webcams on, this is really going to slow down the quality of the Zoom. So my tip to you is not to do that. You can turn on their, all the uh, their videos at a later stage anyway. So I always start with the videos off. Here you want both. I very much doubt if any of your students are going to telephone in, but that would mean that actually they can use both telephone and computer for the audio. Come down to the bottom here, a couple of other things to keep in mind. This can be useful as well. Mute participants on entry. Why? Well, because if you've got 20 students all coming in and suddenly they are um, all chatting, then that's going to create a lot of noise. You really can only have one person talking at a time when you're working uh, with a kind of webinar online classroom. So my tip for you would be to choose that and then to click on save. Now, once you've clicked on save, there's a couple of really useful things. First of all, here is the link to the actual webinar. And you just simply send that to your students. But one thing that Zoom does that's really helpful is they create this really simple invitation. And I can literally copy the top part of that invitation because I know that uh, my friend is going to connect on a link and just copy that and email it or paste it into a website or wherever you want. People know that they click on that button and they can join your webinar. So I just sent an invitation to my friend. I've just emailed him that invitation. So I know that any minute now he's going to click and join. So let's start the meeting. And to start the meeting, we click here. Just click on start meeting. Now, Zoom does require a little plugin. And so you do need to download the plugin onto your computer. Once you've got it, you should see this button here, which is going to open up Zoom. If you haven't got the plugin, you will need to download it for the first time, download and run the plugin. Once you've got it on your computer, you've got it forever, hopefully. And therefore, you'll just simply be able to start your Zooms by clicking here. So I'm going to do that. And it's going to bring me into a little window where it's going to ask me, first of all, to check my sound. First of all, click on this button and test that your sound is working. So you can do this by just, uh, do you hear a ringtone? Okay. And the second one, you can say yes. And then the second one, if I'm going to change that and use this one here. So let's, yeah, that's okay. And then I'm going to say, to say, hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. And yes, it's working. So I'm going to click on yes. So now I'm ready now. Okay. And this is the important thing. Once you've said yes to those, you then need to click on this button, join with computer audio. This will come up on the screen. Join and make sure you click on that because it's that that actually activates both your audio for hearing and for the speaking. So click on that button and you should be started. Okay. And hopefully come into the room. Okay. We're on Zoom now. And I'm sorry that if you've got a ginormous face of me uh, presenting to you, and if I can turn that off. So what you can see here, the important thing is when you roll your cursor over, you'll see that the controls, the most of the controls are at the bottom. And I'm going to point out a couple of really important things. First of all, you're going to want to open up the chat window. Click on this button and that's going to open up the chat to the right hand side. Obviously, that's going to be one of the quick ways that you can communicate with your students. So I'm just going to click on that button now, and you can see now it's opened up the chat window here on the right-hand side. So you can close that. If you click on it again, it's going to close, but open it up, and you can say hello, and anyone that's joining your room will be able to see that. So that's the first thing out. The second thing is you have actually got control of your video. Just for a minute, I'm going to turn the video off. If I come over here to the right-hand side, then if I click here, you'll notice I can click on stop video, but I can also restart the video at any time, okay, by clicking here. Now, let's go through some of the most important settings. Now, another button that people get confused about is this button here. Again, rolling down. Make sure that you click here because it's going to show you when participants join the room. At the moment, it's just me in the room, and we'll be talking about that in a minute. But in a minute, you'll see that other people can join the room, and that's where I'll see that they join. Remember, you've sent an invitation out, and all your students should be able to join the room. And as long as you've got that button turned on, you will see all of the people as they join, and here is where your chat will be, okay? Let's say that you've sent out your invitations, but you've forgot to send an invitation to someone and you've already got your room open. Is there any way you can quickly get the link to them? Well, actually, yes. If you come up to the here on the left and click here, you can actually see the invitation URL and you can even copy that. So you can be in the middle of a presentation and quickly jump out, open up your email and send the invitation to someone if you need to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in on another account in another browser. I'm going to log in to my own Zoom. So I'm going to open up another browser and log in using that link so that then we can start to see what the students see. Okay, so I'm now logged in as a student and I want you to realize something. If you look here, First of all, obviously, the teacher hasn't turned on the video, so we can't see the teacher. But also, the chat room is not available. And this is one of the mistakes that a lot of teachers make, and it is one of the problems with Zoom. In other words, if you, as a teacher, open your chat window, that does not mean that the chat window is open to the students. The students would still need to click here to open up the chat window to, to make sure that the chat window is available to them. So they need to do that. And the same with the participants' window, okay? So now they can see themselves and they can see their teacher. This is a problem with Zoom, as I said. It's not necessarily my tool of choice because there are certain things about it that I don't like. One of them is that, that you haven't got enough control over certain features. Uh, you might do something as the teacher and think your students can see it and they can't. So you need to explain to them that they need to click on both the participants' window and the chat window as well to make sure that they can communicate with the students. Now, in this case now, we've got both of the windows open. They can see themselves. I've called, yeah, the student's called Tom and they can see the uh, teacher here and they can also chat by just clicking up here at the bottom and saying, hello, everyone. And that is sent to everybody 
everybody in the room. Sorry, I scrolled down. <laughs> okay, so really, really important points. And when I've been doing some training this week, I've been doing quite a lot of individual training. Once I learned to use this technology, um, that was coming up as a problem. However, there are some really good features in Zoom uh, in terms of teaching, and we're going to focus on those in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to start to go uh, into the part where we're going to do some live sessions with teachers uh, so that you can kind of see what uh, both the student can see and what the teacher can do. And we're going to start with me being the participant and my friend Keith being the presenter. We're going to talk about the audio first because you can't have all your students speaking. You've got to think about what you're going to do to deal with that problem. Uh, you can get the students to raise your hand, their hands, and you can turn their audio on. And I'm going to take you through that and highlight how we can deal with it. So when you're working with the audio, you'll see the list of your students here. And the first thing is you can mute them all. If you haven't muted them before they come into the room, you can mute them all here. And then you can just roll over a participant and you can either turn on or off their audio. So that way you can say to a student when you want them to speak. So they, you, they can either do that in the chat window or they can raise their hand. And by doing that, they are able then, or you're able to say, right, okay, I'm going to turn on the uh, audio and you can now speak. Because you can't have all the students speaking at the same time. Let's actually see Keith doing that with me. Turn you on from here, or I can turn you off. Right, do you want to try that? Uh, turn off your audio. Yeah. So if I want to turn off your audio, I can do that. Right, so that, that's interesting for me to know this. Right, so now I'm hearing you, but I'm yeah. just re-turn your audio. Here we go. They go back again. Brilliant. Okay, so that's just really, really interesting. Um, that that facility. So let's have a look. So we talked a little bit about the things on the left hand side. Now there's a couple more. Can you turn at the moment? You can see me on the webcam. Do you have the control to get rid of my ugly face? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can. Uh, I'm going to turn you off and then turn you back on again. Hang on a sec. Let's go. Uh, so that'll go. Right. In terms of the video, uh, what I've got up here is that I can. Uh, if you put your hand back and put your hand down, yeah. I can silence you. In terms of the video, under the other menu, I can stop your video. Let's have a look. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Um, then just as a name, so if you put any funny faces, I'm turning you off if you're putting me off. Uh, and then uh, let's just see if we can. Uh, turn the video back on again. Yeah. I'm just having a look for. There we go. Okay, then I need to click on that. So that's really interesting, Keith. When you stopped me, right, and then I needed to, uh, then you set me up to start again. I had to click on start video to actually start that process. Yeah, so that's and I get it. Obviously, I'm going to the Spanish system. Okay, then come to one of the most important things now, and that's the ability to screen share. And the way that screen share works, and this is really, if you're a teacher, this is perhaps the most important thing. I'll give you a couple of examples why. First of all, if you want to play a video to your students, you can open up the video onto your computer screen, screen share through Zoom, and then you need to click on one button to make sure that the students can also hear it, and then you can play the video, you can watch the video, and they're also seeing the video. And once you finish, you just stop screen sharing and it comes back to normal. So if you want them perhaps to listen to a video and then to discuss questions, the good thing with the screen share is it's one of the good things in Zoom, you've got control. So when you pause it, it's paused for them as well. Normal screen sharing tools work like that. Now, when you do screen share, it doesn't just have to be a video. I could screen share, for example, an exercise. I could open up an exercise onto the screen on my computer, screen share it so the students can see it. And actually, I can even mark that exercise, I can underline things on that exercise. So to screen share, I won't obviously play my video while I'm doing this, just to make it absolutely clear. You come down to this button here, click on screen share, and what you need to do is you need to choose which of the windows you want to screen share. So I'm going to screen share this tab because I want to play this video. But make sure that you click on this button here. Okay, because if you click on that button, it will make sure that the audio plays for your students. Then click on the share button, the video will open. You're now sharing the screen, and you can click on the video. Some language, helping state it. interventions, unprecedented. Your when you stop, it stops for them as well. You've got control. This is actually one of the really good features about working with Zoom. And then when you finish, you click on stop, and now you're back out of screen share. That's the way screen share works. But I want to just take you through a few more things. Let's talk about some other ways that you can use screen share. Okay, so let's look at another option. This could be with a document, it could be with a picture. Again, I'm just trying to make the point that you can screen share anything. So I'm going to screen share a PowerPoint slide, and I'm going to click on share and open that onto the screen. The students will be able to see this now. But if I come up to the top here and click over on a note, I can even choose to be able to draw on that screen so I can mark things as I'm talking about them. That can be quite useful. Okay. Now a little tip: if you're on this screen, for example, and then you click on here and you want to move to the next screen, so let's say I move back to this one, you'll notice that the drawing's still on the screen. So while you're on that screen, make sure you come over to clear, click on clear all drawings, and then move to your next screen. And then of course the drawings will be clicked out of the way. I hope that video is useful. Um, please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. Lots of more free videos. And I've done a special section for teaching online. And then there's lots of technologies along here that you can look at. If you want to sign up and follow my newsletter, that'd be a good idea. You keep up with all the latest blog posts and the webinars and the online courses and all the videos I put up. And you can also follow me on YouTube. And uh, I've got quite a lot of subscribers on my YouTube channel now. Around about 13,000. I've quite popular. And contact me from this, wipe, from this website if you just scroll down to the bottom if you want to ask me about online courses or online training. Uh, I'm doing courses with individuals and with groups. And I hope that was useful. And thank you very much.